Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox here. We're doing a cloud computing technology. This is part three of the section, because the section starts with parallel computing. Um, and uh, unit three here is part two of clouds. Part one of clouds is unit two. And this is lesson four of um, this uh, unit three. And we're doing big data application analytics. And here we're on the technology side. Uh, which of course underlies all these applications. And this is a pretty exciting section in that it's discussing the um, the amazing software that's used to analyze data today. So let's get round to this software. So this software is called HPC High Performance Computing Dash Apache Big Data Stack. That's A B D S. And uh, this is some concept we came up with about, uh, about a year ago now. And uh, here it is, the Apache Big Data Stack. Um, and what do we see? Well, we see 287 pieces of software. Well, uh, we, won't let, we won't wait while you want to study them in great detail. Uh, they're arranged in layers. So the bottom layer, which is nearest the hardware, is at the bottom and consists of uh, image, I mean, management of the images or management of the, uh, the basic uh, software we're doing. It's followed by the so called DevOps, the uh, technology for, um, for, for, um, Deploying automatically uh, clusters and machine software and things. There's an interoperability layer. Then we get to file systems. We look at the management of clusters and sets of computers. We look at the transport of the data. We look at the management of files. And uh, we have actually this layer 11, three sub layers, file management, the so called NoSQL or modern uh, high performance. Uh, Data systems, SQL, which includes NoSQL, which is SQL redone to match some of the features of the NoSQL systems. We're looking at various extraction tools, object relational mappings, in memory databases and caches. These are all put in a layer for the core, just about, it's below the application and above the system. We have a lot of important technologies to move data around, messaging. Where we have so called pub sub systems and communication technologies like uh, MPI. Then above that, we have the basic programming, a very important layer where we have streams, and then we have MapReduce and things like that. Giraffe, Prego, these are all variants of MapReduce, as a Spark. Then we have the overall framework, which is sort of dominant in commercial clouds. We have high level programming such as uh, Hive, which is SQL on uh, Hadoop, and Pig, which is a data parallel language on Hadoop. Then at level 16, we have applications and, analyt and analytics. These are libraries. Uh, Mahout is the most famous Apache library, but MLlib is faster. And we have things like a cafe from deep learning. Uh, various graph libraries here, SciNet, GraphLab. And above that, we have so called uh, workflow and orchestration, the things that joins lots of different jobs together to get the, uh, get the answer. Total job, because most real, real jobs have lots of sub jobs, which are integrated together in a loose fashion. Then we have these cross cussing functions like message and data protocols, coordination, zookeepers, very famous technology here. Security and privacy is just pervasive, so that's why it's sort of cross cutting. And then we have monitoring technologies that tell you at these various layers what's going on. All right, there are 21 layers here if we separate out these things like high level and frameworks, A and Bs are here. And 287 software packages. The software packages come from high performance computing, Apache software, other open source like MongoDB is, uh, is open source, but not Apache. HBase is similar, but it's Apache and open source, and so on. And also some critical commercial technologies such as Google App Engine or um, uh, Oracle SQL database, and so on. 
Anyways, these you have to of course remember all 287 packages and be able at a snap to tell people what they do. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Here's how they get used. This is again uh, um, these layers just written out. We start with the four cross-cutting layers, and then here's the bottom layer, which is actually now written at the top because we had layer five below layer 17 on our previous picture, but now they're done in, in numerical order with their A, Bs, and Cs where they're available. Yeah, so these are the 21 layers, which I call functionalities, including the subparts of levels 11, 14, and 15. And um, in this particular lesson, we're gonna tell you how they get used. And say four cross-cutting at the top, 17 in order of the layer diagram starting at the bottom. Uh, before we do that, we'll give you another another couple of uh, pictures about how they get used. So this is another way of looking at it. And here again, we have you know somehow the bottom layer, or I mean the bottom layer is things like the actual infrastructure, the clouds, or the supercomputers, and the top layer is the, the orchestration or the application or the libraries, which are the things you build applications out of. And so it's natural to put it in this order for this type of diagram. And in the previous diagram, which um, put um, thought it would be good to have number five above the number 17, which is remember, virtualization was, fi was five and 17 orchestration, put uh, this thing at the top above that, but this is all trivial. So here we have this integrated software, the 287 packages. And here's sort of how they get, might get used in two fields. Here is you know, classic startup using Apache software to bootstrap their uh, billion dollar startup. And here we have uh, a bunch of old HPC people trying to plug away on a cluster and do some high performance computing. And these are the software they might use. And uh, they're sort of matching. HPC likes Docker, it's high performance. Uh, clouds might like OpenStack, we have these formats. Here's a famous astronomy format. HDF is a, is a very popular scientific format. File systems, HDFS, object stores, Lustre. So we try to contrast, Yarn is a scheduler for ABDS, Slam is one from HPC. Data transfer, Skook and Grid FTP. Data management, here we have no SQL and SQL databases. Here we have file management. Science tends to use files, not, uh, not fancy managers like HBase. We have coordination, doesn't tend to get used in HPC. Caching tends not to get used. Runtime, MapReduce for big data, MPI, OpenMP, OpenCL are typical uh, parallel runtimes are used in HPC. We have streaming, Storm, Kafka. Amazon Kinesis, that's a commercial package. Uh, we don't see that in HPC. Languages, like HPC tends to be C, C++, with a still Fortran used. In the big data world is Java, Erlang, and of course SQL or Sparkle as uh, database languages. We have platform as a service. We have the overall framework, which is the Google App Engine, IBM Bluemix, Amazon Beanstalk. And then you, if you go and use uh, NSF Succeed supercomputers, they have their favorite software stack, which is sort of equivalent. High level program, we have Pig, Hive, Drill, and then we have domain specific languages, a good topic in HPC. Specialized languages uh, uh, um, for uh, expressing particular areas. We have in the library area, MATLAB, Eclipse, various other custom apps, we have MLlib, Mahout. R is a hugely popular open source library, and doing things in Python is very popular. Python is also getting used in HPC. In fact, these two sides are getting a little merged as, uh, as people tr from either side tries to learn the other side. Orchestration, Kepler and Pegasus, a typical um, HPC orchestration on workflow languages. Crunch, Tez, Google Cloud Dataflow, the commercial offering are typical ones for the um, Apache side. Okay. 
So now we just uh, go through these um, uh, 17 or 21 layers, just uh, saying a little bit about each layer. And so we had the message protocol, Thrift, <coughs> and Protobuf from Google. Both are actually open source, but have similar ways of building APIs automatically and uh, constructing the necessary messaging uh, based on those APIs. Coordination, there's lots of important coordination. You need to make certain you have a uh, you know, concurrency when you have concurrent programs. You need to avoid inconsistent data on different machines. You, previously that was done by ad hoc fashions, but now you have technologies like Zookeeper, which come, came originally from a, um, um, a Google product, a Google system which they published, um, and um, it's very popular. It's used, for instance, in streaming data to coordinate the actions of uh, the streams, and that's, I say, Apache Storm. J Groups is also in this category. It's a secure multicast messaging system, rather different concept, but put in the same category. Security and privacy, you could write a whole course on security and privacy, so we're not going to do it justice here with less than a slide. And um, there are many, I and mean, we have authorization and authentication. Authentication is uh, Often you go to there and you just like in this course, you authenticate with your Google login, with other alternative use Facebook, your Microsoft logins. In common is a sort of equivalent from Internet too, which federates the uh, the security models and of and the logins of different uh, educational institutions. Okay, so uh, here we have also LDAP, which is, for instance, what we use uh, locally in future systems. It's a simple database technology which records the information needed for authorization and authentication. And it's a key component of many secure management systems. And um, OpenStack Keystone is a role based authorization system. Often you, are, you think of roles, you assign people roles. And then you say a certain role allows you to do certain things. So rather than assigning authorization to individual users, you assign authorization to roles and roles to users. So that's a dominant uh, role-based authorization uh, systems or access control is a dominant technology. Monitoring is uh, actually uh, HPC is probably ahead of uh, Apache here. Um, Nagios and Gangia come from the cluster community. They are probably the dominant technologies. And um, you, are, you, you will always be using monitoring, but maybe not in your application, because it's all done at the system level, because you, you tend maybe, you can just find out yourself whether your job aborted or not. You don't need a monitor to tell you that. So these are the, this is the end of the cross cutting. And now we start at the bottom of the stack with infrastructure, infrastructure as a service management, which is can I even doesn't have to have a, a hypervisor. You include in here bare, bare metal, and um, OpenStack is the dominant, at least in the U.S. technology. Open Nebula, of course, is used in Europe, and uh, it has um, it manages virtual machines, the computing, the storage, and the networking. Commercial clouds have uh, different solutions. Commercial proprietary solutions. However, they have interfaces. There are standards which are under interoperability, a couple of levels up from here. And um, it allows you to move machine images between these different environments. So, say you can view bare metal, no hypervisor is a special case of a hypervisor. Uh, there is a technology called Docker that's actually making it a lot easier to use Linux containers to produce. Uh, uh, high, relatively high performance, uh, secure uh, um, environments. So DevOps is this concept of uh, automating a lot of the uh, system admin functions. It's been developed uh, partly by these giant clusters that need as much automation, automation as possible. And it allows you to build effectively software-defined systems, an important concept. And in the end, university, we have Cloud Mesh, which is a software-defined system system. 
It's built on top of other systems, Libcout, Carpenter, Chef, Docker, Slurm, Ansible, and Puppet and Celery. And uh, DevOps, in my opinion, is likely to continue to advance and be critical in everything that people do. We can't afford in these complex worlds of, to not try to automate as much as possible. Here is a sort of slightly uh, curious layer, interoperability, but you know, I actually have all these different choices, like um, you know, a virtualization, you have Nimbus, Eucalyptus, Open Nebula, CloudStack, OpenStack, uh, Amazon, Azure, Google, Bare Metal, you need to have standards that allow you to move back and forth. So we have Word for Services, Archive for Computer, which is sort of equivalent to the Amazon EC2 interface, and Storage, which is CDMI. Although I say a lot of people actually don't use these formal standards, they use so-called de facto standards, which for computing is the Amazon EC2 interface. Essentially every system uses files, because files are just how things are stored on disk. However, not everybody exposes files. In science, you expose the files to the users almost always. And, um, but in most commercial applications, you do not expose the files, but rather you use uh, an object store like Swift, uh, OpenStack Swift, or Amazon S3. It's sort of interesting. Uh, science has not moved to open open object stores, but I think they ought to. And I expect to see changes in this area in science, or if you like, in HPC. Cluster resource management is a very old, important field because you um, you have your thousand node cluster. You better make a hundred thousand node cluster in your giant cloud system or multi-cluster, then you need to manage it. And assign jobs and make certain the jobs run efficiently. And you have cluster managers and also meta managers that manage sets of clusters. <coughs> so that's meta scheduling. And we have things like Moab, SunGrid Engine, now owned by Oracle, of course. Open PBS are classic um, HPC systems. Slurm is probably the most popular. Uh, and Condor is uh, from Wisconsin, are very, very especially important in grid applications. Mesos is similar to Yarn, and uh, after a slightly slower start, is becoming popular. <coughs> Too much to say. All right, data transport. Yeah, we know that uh, BitTorrent, the dominant data transport system in the world, at least it used to be, it may no longer be. But in the in these types of worlds, we have Globus Online or Grid FTP from HPC. It's a secure uh, multi-screen version of, HT, of FTP to get high performance and security. It doesn't tend to be highlighted much in the Apache stack, which tends you to use either simple HTTP protocols or actually just Think of everything. It doesn't actually discuss data transport. It's just all stored on on your in your object store. You just pass the data on the object store. And of course, if you have a lot of data, you just use your FedEx UPS solution of transporting disks between sites. Amazon, for example, supports that. Now we come to the uh, management of the data in chunks, where we have file management. We have uh, NoSQL and SQL. Uh, we mentioned that file management is a uh, very popular for uh, science, uh, but no C, and then the sort of SQL dominated commercial application. MySQL and Oracle are the two famous examples, but Postgres and others are all equally in, uh, also very important. But no SQL has, uh, by relaxing some of the constraints of SQL, got much better performance, although it's again may require more pain from the user. Because the user has to worry about the lack of guaranteed consistency. He can enjoy, he or she can enjoy the extra performance uh, gotten by relaxing consistency, but um, uh, it's still, um, it's, but this is a very important area, and you'll see uh, different data, different data types have different data structures, tables, documents, graphs, objects, and they're all meant to be done efficiently. And I say it used to be all dominated by SQL. And file manager, but now it's a much richer and uh, more powerful environment. I mentioned uh, these in memory uh, databases just lying below the application and above the system. 
Um, in memory of, ever, of anything is hugely important for obvious reasons. Memory access is much faster than this as, as, uh, access. We have these technologies to map between the objects, which are sort of the universal programming model, and the relational representation of data, which is the typical SQL and even NoSQL way it's stored, because uh, even NoSQL uses tables. Actually, rather simpler tables, possibly, than SQL databases. So these are a whole set of tools which allow effectively act, act as a buffer between the managed uh, data on disk, which is in SQL or no SQL, or files, and the memory, in, uh, and also the data is accessed by the computer program, as an, typically as a Java or other equivalent object. Um, and this, if you look at the Gartner charts, in-memory databases and in-memory analytics are dominant technologies. All right, here we have this uh, inter the communication layer. Uh, if you were an HPC person, you would love MPI, which is actually called HARP here. HARP is an MPI wrap to be usable in a dupe. And uh, <coughs> the other uh, um, important area is publish, subscribe. Publish, subscribe should be used more often. It's a very powerful. Uh, Model for doing messaging where you don't necessarily want the very highest performance, but you want a very robust system where you have brokers which effectively manage the communication and avoid all the difficulties of clients and subscribe and beginning in the endpoints of a messaging going down or having problems. There's always brokers in the middle in pub sub systems. That produces far more robust environments, <coughs> which I recommend. All right. We have this programming model, SPMD, MapReduce, and so on. And um, we have here the Spark and the Twister from IU, which is replaced actually by the Harp model built into a dupe. So sort of we've gone back to using a dupe with a plugin. We have various uh, versions of a dupe: Hammer, Giraffe, Prego. We have graph databases, Pegasus, or graph systems, Pegasus. We have streaming systems here, uh, Storm, S4, and Samza. Uh, Tears workflow is at the higher level, and uh, Tears and Yarn and, uh, are uh, integrated with um, uh, these systems. So we then have higher level programming. This is trying to, you know, even this is quite low level. And we need to try to do a good job here and uh, provide better interfaces for users. Pig is one example of a data parallel model. Swazol from Google, uh, I don't think it's used much because it, they didn't, they put it sort of in open source, but not completely in open source. Some key parts were missing. <clears throat> and people had enough to do rather than fill in those parts. And then we have these famous Hive, which is on um, Shark, which are basically. Um, uh, SQL on uh, MapReduce uh, and uh, the drill and things which are which are SQL on on um, no SQL and things like that. So these are all uh, higher level systems that provide more convenient ways for users to access data, uh, which is stored in an efficient fashion. But then we need in the program to get it um, extracted in an automatic fashion. All right, here's our last slide. Uh, on layer 15, we have Part B, the frameworks, <coughs> where the Google App Engine and Azure are classic frameworks. You sometimes call these platform as a service. The platform as a service has things like Hadoop running in it, and then this overall environment is a framework, which is Google App Engine, Azure, and so on. And there are many, many. IBM has Blue Mix and things like that. There are many such frameworks. Layer 16 of the libraries, where you got moved from Mahout and the Apache library. We have um, ImageJ, which is image processing. Cafe and CompLearn from uh, Deep Learning. Uh, bioinformatics is built from R, Bioconductor. HPC has famous libraries here. And uh, you will always use these libraries. Libraries are a very important way, because you can build in parallelism into your library. 
And that makes life a lot easier. You don't have to worry about parallelism in your program. Somebody built a nifty library implementing it. Final layer here, which is the last uh, exhausting uh, comments in this lesson. We have workflow and orchestration. When you have a any one job, that job usually has components. Uh, you might do, uh, I don't know, you take your data and clean it up, component number one. You take the cleaned up data and feed it into a an, an algorithm, a map produce algorithm, which somehow uh, produces something out of it, uh, some insights, uh, such as the such as the classic uh, web search. So these are components. These components are joined together to run a total job, which takes the raw data and then gives you the final output. So that's called workflow, because it describes the flow of data through uh, your system, and it's also sometimes called data flow. This workflow is typically implemented either as control flow or as data flow. It's also sometimes called orchestration, because it's what you're doing. You're conducting the, uh, you're making your different Apache software systems dance to your command to get what you want out of it. And it's, um, we had, a, we will actually do, do access patterns in a, in a later slide, and that will, uh, we will see, um, Pipelines there, which is a very important area. And grid community did a lot of work here. And um, you often have visual interfaces here, where you have bubbles representing programs and lines representing connections. And you draw these lines and connections. And um, so this is a pretty important area. You will find the cloud community of Apache Stack is producing a whole new set of workflow systems like Crunch and Tears and things like that, Google Cloud Dataflow. And these are sort of, to some extent, bypassing or not so clearly taking the best advantage of the uh, current uh, HPC workflows. For HPC, because grids naturally have workflow, because grids are distributed systems and you tend to run separate jobs in each of the components of a distributed system. So it's very natural to have workflow as critical in grids. And so the whole grid initiative in the HPC community produced lots of very sophisticated, powerful workflow engines. So anyway, that's the software, and you need to know all 287 or else you will fail this course. Actually, very few people would have actually listened to this talk, so they won't know they failed the talk, the course. So, so be it, let's move on. Thank you very much, this is the end of this, uh, Second unit on cloud software and systems, and it's the last fourth lesson of that uh, of that unit. Thank you very much. This is Jeffrey signing off.